Oh my goodness, week one is finally here. We preview the Thursday night game. I can't believe football is back. And we've got some undrafted gyms on the show today. Do not miss this episode. Fantasy Footballers is brought to you by Head & Shoulders and Walmart. NFL fans always love arguing whether offense wins games or defense wins championships. And we all know Head & Shoulders is great offense for your hair. Oh, no, no, Mike. It is great defense against flakes. Sure. No matter where you fall on the offense versus defense debate, Head & Shoulders will give you a 100% flake-free scalp. Find Head & Shoulders on Walmart.com. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Welcome to the show. It's going to be spectacular. Hmm. It's real, and it's spectacular. Wednesday, September 4th. I like Seinfeld references, Mike. So you are welcome. You win the day. Welcome into the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Jason Moore, Mike, the Fantasy Hitman, right? I'm Andy Holloway. We've got a great one. Buy and sell on the show today. Some news, some big news, some big money news. Some undrafted gems and a Thursday night preview. The fantasy season is upon us. Oh, tomorrow. We'll talk about what's in store for David Mopportunity, Aaron Jones, Aaron Rodgers. All the Aarons will be discussed. And uh, I'm excited. You can follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers, the website. I encourage you to go check it out. TheFantasyFootballers.com, our week one rankings. The start-sit tool. The end-season shenanigans begin now. <laughs> yes. And based on what I was seeing last night, you're very, very interested in week one. Oh. The Foot Clan is ready for real football, as am I. And last night we also had the first two Megalobowl drafts take place. Ooh. And... My goodness. Hundreds of draft rooms filled with the Foot Clan, all vying for fantasy glory and that spot in the Listener League 2020. Uh, also, heard your feedback about the auto. So occasionally, you had like an auto drafted person that popped into a Mega Bowl. They just couldn't be there for the draft. We got some feedback about how that took quite a while to get through the drafts. We passed that along. That's going to be improved fix for next year we've also removed those people from the earth really yes mm -hmm. well i'm we not taking responsibility for that <laughs> look they're, they're they're fine they're on the space station okay thank you mike i didn't say we like now we're safe we're hurting people we just removed them but uh lots of drafts yesterday today for the megalobowl and then uh, obviously tomorrow Week one begins, Bears Packers, and we'll talk about it on the show today. There's still time to go win a signed Alvin Kamara jersey at FootClanGiveaway.com. And I want to tease out the next couple of days. Thursday, Friday, we'll have Fantasy Forecast. We'll have starts of the week. Jason's Boom Boom Kicker returns. Oh, get ready. <laughs> because us removing kickers from our league of record does not remove them from all leagues. Unfortunately. And so, Jason's research, you normally begin around, uh, what, like noon on Wednesday? You wrap that kicker research up by showtime tomorrow? Yeah, I mean, I, I started months ago okay. with deep preparation just for week one. I mean, get ready. Yeah. I love kickers. <laughs> Can we get that soundbite saved to his uh, soundboard? Foot Clan Friday, coming up on Friday, in or out, all the injury reports, the second half of the fantasy forecast, and we got a new segment, Ballers on a Budget, that is coming on Friday, where uh, it's basically our, our little DFS segment where we're going to give you some of the best priced players, our favorite picks for if you're, you know, if you're playing it on- It was Tony Pollard. Yeah. <laughs> Back yeah. to the drawing board. Back to the drawing board. But it is Wednesday today, so we'll kick it off with some buy-sell. Buy or Sell, presented by Pristine Auction. 
All right. Brooks has selected a number of week one buy or sell decisions. Mm -hmm. He calls it faces in new places. Yes. So we'll start with Mark Ingram. Will Mark Ingram surpass 100 rushing yards in week one against Miami? Buy. Buy, buy, buy. Buy. You both believe yes. Purchase. Yes. I'll sell it. Buy. No way. I have not been the largest Mark Ingram supporter through the draft season. Yeah, I think Gus Edwards eats in a little bit, but this is this is the matchup that you're looking for. This is where you're a heavy favorite. You're going to run the clock out in the fourth quarter. You don't have a great defense in Miami. Uh, you know, Mark Ingram, he'll cross 100 yards a few times this season. I would project a game like this to be the one where it gets done. Now, I would prefer that it's in Baltimore, but it is still Miami. I think you'll get more Gus Bus than you hope. I mean, my draft persona is happy. Your I'm draft not, persona? <laughs> your what? I'm just I'm saying the part of me that is draft focused. I've been more on the Gus Bus and not just that Mark Ingram's going to get everything, but the my the week 1 persona. You're saying it would be happy if you were wrong about your buy. That is correct. Okay. Either I'm way, I win. Very confused I about what. No idea what's happening. So you bought that Mark Ingram will have 100 rushing yards, but you're also happy if he doesn't. I'm happy if Gus Edwards is the reason he doesn't. All right. Buy, sell Antonio Brown 100 receiving yards to open the season week one against Denver. I will buy it. I will sell it. There you go. I'm going to buy as well. He looked. Really good this last. Uh, have you guys? Are you guys up to date on Hard Knocks? Uh, I am not caught up. I have seen Luke Wilson get cut on yeah. Hard Knocks. Oh, yeah. Luke Wilson! The cuts are always hard because those are humans vying for jobs. Can we that are not do fired. a better job than this long, prolonged, like one intern to the next intern handoff? Like you know where you're going, but these poor souls have to walk with these players mm -hmm. for like 15 minutes. <laughs> To bring them to a special cut room. Can we not text this at this point? Right. They know what's but, going well, on. Well, they want the human interaction. But Do they? Well, the coach, time. The, the coach does. <laughs> FaceTime. Maybe then. a couple people, but I wouldn't want to do that all day long. Yeah, I'm going to buy Antonio Brown. I think they're going to force feed him the ball week one, try to get their new shiny toy off to a hot start. This one is close. I, I'm really on the fence about Antonio Brown. 100 yards is a lot for yeah, that's a Derek lot, man. Carr. I mean, last year, even as great as Antonio Brown was, he was only over 100 yards five times with Big Ben. So I will take the under. That's fair. I will but sell. I, uh, you know, week one, he's got something to prove, wants to show he's the same guy. I'm going to go by. Is he going to throw himself the ball? He doesn't need to. He doesn't need to. Odell Beckham Jr., week one, new face, new place. Cleveland taking on Tennessee. 100 receiving yards for Odell week one. I will sell that as well. I will sell it. Look, Tennessee is not a terrible defense at no. all. And even though we're talking new face, new place, I would much rather have Baker Mayfield being my new face at quarterback over Derek Carr. There just there hasn't been enough time. I think we, we need some actual game action for Odell Beckham. Certainly could, but I'm going to sell this one. I'm uh, Look, three names. Three buys. I'm in. Wow. I, I think that uh, I think that the <laughs> Jason says the defense is going on break. He just wants a great week one. I want. I'm, maybe I'm just too doggone excited for week one football. But uh, yeah, we'll, I mean, we'll know with number four if you're Od how Odell excited Beckham you are. is widely right now. I think he's the consensus number one wide receiver on the week because some of the other top options have really tough cornerback matchups. Um, really? Yeah. No, well, I'm mean, saying he Beckham number one. I mean, I would. He like was when Hopkins I looked yesterday. And Thomas. All right. Sure. Not for me. Yeah. I'll sell that one. Lev Bell, 100 receiving. Or, or, sorry. <laughs> sell. 100 rushing yards. Also sell. With his debut. Mike, you're selling. Yep. Jason, what are you doing? I am selling. I don't buy it. Adam Gase and that offensive line. I will sell it until I have been proven wrong. I don't think he gets 100 yards. Buffalo is a great defense yep. on top of that. All right, and then the last one, Duke Johnson. Does he reach 100 total yards? Wow. 
So not rushing, but rushing and receiving combined. Are they adding him to the kick return game? <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> because if not, then oh, to an all purpose yard. I will sell full heartedly. Okay. I, I don't I don't uh you know, I think Carlos Hyde still eats into the work. We brought up Alfred Blue and <clears throat> I'll buy it. You're buying I'll the buy 100? Duke Johnson a hundred total yards, yeah. I think he can I think he can go fifty fifty. Fifty on the ground, fifty through the air, no problem. Week I will one. I will sell. I'm and not this doesn't mean that he can't because I think Duke Johnson's a great player. I'm very curious how many times in his career he's ever been over a hundred yards. Because it I, can't be more than just a handful. Yeah, it's probably not not many. But uh I like him week one. That was buy or sell from Pristine Auction. You can go to pristineauction.com, use the registration code BALLERS, and you will get $5 towards a sports memorabilia purchase. Hundreds of daily auctions on there. Uh, let's get into the news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. All right, the Cowboys, they got it done. Ezekiel Elliott did what Le'Veon Bell could not do, which mm. is show up for week one after an offseason of tumult. Or Melvin Gordon. Or Melvin Gordon. Now, Zeke got a lot of money to, to show up. So <laughs> yes, he did. Six years, $90 million. Woo! What a great offseason for Zeke. Like, he, he got out of everything. <laughs> Rested his body through training camp, through preseason, whilst in Cabo. And then gets gigantic bags of money. He's doing it right. So it's a done deal, which means we have to reconfigure the Tony Tony Pollard experiment. Right. Uh, right now, the uh, Jane Slater from NFL Network, according to uh, her report, twenty to twenty-five reps on Sunday. Okay. Rookie Tony Pollard behind him. I mean, you can't play Tony Pollard now. No. You can't. I, mean, I don't think – I mean, look, we, we've seen this before. In 2017, when Lev Bell held out for a long period of time, came back for week one, and still dominated that season, he only had 10 carries that week one. So it, it can happen where – but that doesn't mean that the backup is going to get a bunch of work and be valuable. I am still – like the question is being asked now, are you just full force with Zeke week one – Especially now, they're they're talking about maybe you know will the will the carries be there? I am without hesitation. There's no chance that I'm not starting Zeke week one. They're paying him too much money not exactly. to give him the ball. He's in shape. He's in playing shape. He's ready to go. The Rams surprisingly, was it, not surprisingly that they would want to get it done, but surprising to all of us who didn't know it was taking place. Jared Goff signs a four year. Jared. Now introducing all hail the richest quarterback in the land, Jerry <laughs> Garth. Four years, one hundred you you ran out of thirty-four steam, million dollars, an NFL <laughs> record, one hundred and ten million in guarantees. <gasps> what? I had missed that part. Is Jared Goff this good? I well, I think Jared Goff is a very good quarterback. It it took Sean McVay to unlock him. Which I saw some people on Twitter, you know, well, what, how good is Jared Goff without Sean McVay? Like, who cares? Does it matter? <laughs> right. It doesn't matter how, at all. How good is Todd Gurley without Sean McVay? How good is Sean McVay without, without Jared, Goff? Jared Goff? I mean, put in Blake Bortles, the backup, and see how great Sean McVay really is. This is a huge part of the NFL. There, You work your butt off. You're the elite of the elite and you finally make it to the NFL, and then sometimes you just get drawn a real bad hand, you end up on a bad team with a bad coaching staff who doesn't know how to use you, and you look like you suck. And sometimes you're not that great of a player, and you're in a perfect situation, and everybody loves you. Well, I mean, you're 100% right. That is just the name of all professional that's sports. The name, it's the name of life. That's, that's how it goes. If Ezekiel Elliott and Melvin Gordon flip teams... I think you've got a totally different situation on your hands with Jerry Jones and what he's willing to do. Melvin Gordon actually called Zeke and said, can we work this out? Please. Maybe they'll pay both. <laughs> Maybe that's the, the mysterious Melvin Gordon trade. 
Oh, to the Cowboys. Yeah. <laughs> Two-headed monster. Um, Gio Bernard signed a two-year, $10 million extension. Good for you, Gio. Gio Bernard will be used. Yeah. Agreed. I'm, I'm not moving Mixon down. I mean, You're not? No. Because I already had Gio's usage work baked into Joe Mixon where I have him statted out. That's fair because I think we all believed that Gio would be used – you know, t- 10 to 15 touches a game, maybe? 8 to 12, I mean, yeah, somewhere think, in that range? I think more in the 8 to 12 range. But uh, he, Gio he, was there for 12 games last year, and Joe Mixon was was fine. The, the other things around the Bengals, those are far more concerning to me than, than Gio eating workload. Uh, Ian Rampaport reporting that Melvin Gordon, the trade rumors, it doesn't sound like a deal is going to happen because <laughs> the Chargers are reportedly looking for a – 2020 first round pick along with a piece of melvin gordon's soul it's in a transaction uh, dude it's just rough that the chargers are saying no there's uh, the, the discrepancy of how much money you want and we want to give you you aren't worth it oh but by the way you are worth a 2020 first round pick i think and i i will be the first to admit i have been on the optimistic Gordon side which has been the wrong direction I think there's a I think there's a chance Melvin Gordon rolls up in week two I, I there's really, a chance yes I, he's just gonna accomplish nothing he's gonna accomplish nothing to just hold out he's not getting paid a ton of money yet he's gonna lose 300 something thousand dollars a game and he's gonna accomplish nothing not to show up well it, it's not nothing he protects his body he can't yes. get hurt in an NFL game. That is true. If he's not playing. That's yeah. a good point. But I, I think that there is a chance, and I'm not saying it's a guarantee or that I believe it's probable. But I think there's a decent chance that he shows up. Where week two? Where if if you're still yet to draft, where would you draft him, Andy? With your your idea, because I he's pretty much off my board. Like I can't imagine taking him unless he's in the twelfth. Because I I just I think that the the chance of him missing the whole season is as good as him coming back as early as Look, week if I, two. If I'm in the ninth round and I'm saying, man, I, I get to have Melvin Gordon in a shot on my team or Adrian Peterson, I'm going to take Gordon at this point. If I have to decide between Jordan Howard and Melvin Gordon, I'm going to take Gordon because I think there's enough of a chance that, you know, substitute your desires for Kareem Hunt and draft Melvin Gordon. How about that? Yeah, I can get on board with that. So I... It's a it's a tough situation for him because he's not going to get paid right now. He needs to reorient himself if he wants to get paid in the long term. And the Chargers seem to just be content moving forward with Austin Eckler and Justin Jackson and the and the players in camp. So, um, I don't think I want to get in to these unofficial depth charts. I agree. I don't think it's valuable. Yeah, depth charts. I would love to just pretend like it's really valuable because Matt Breida was listed at the number one spot and Tevin Coleman's at two. But you don't want to get to where Michael Crabtree's a starter. That's the best part. That's the best. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, Andy hates Michael Crabtree. This is so good. Um, yeah, no, but the, the depth the, charts the don't is, matter. The they, league is littered with a bunch of these veteran preferable situations. Um, I just You just don't read into it very much. No, I agree. So – um, I think I think that'll do it for news and notes. Brought to you as always by the Sleeper app. Get it, get it, or else. Apparently, that's did I write that, Brooks? Or else? Did I say or else? Yes, sir. We oh are. oh, or else you will miss the latest fantasy news. Mm, I that's thought it what, might be or else will remove you from the <laughs> earth. <laughs> yeah, Mike. We've, we've done it before. Mike acts like that's a real or else. <laughs> Very severe language. Uh, so I'm. I turned people into scientists. We that's are, what I did. That's if you go to the space station, you become a scientist. Yeah, you're you an astronaut, to, and you're doing science experiments. That's a hundred percent true. You have to be a scientist to be at the space. You're show. growing plants up in space. Is, that's what they, Mike. I had no idea. You're teaching me so much today. Um, we've got some undrafted gyms we want to share Zero with you. Zero gravity pooping upgrade. You think? <laughs> uh. Maybe. It, sounds, right. it sounds like it might Seems be Seems like a little bit of trouble. <laughs> All right. Before we get to our undrafted gyms, we want to thank today's sponsors. FanDuel is a great platform to play. They've been a longtime sponsor of the show. We've partnered with them because their game is so much fun. This season, FanDuel has more ways to win cash prizes and once-in-a-lifetime experiences during every game every week. In fact, 
Stay tuned soon. We're going to be talking about a very cool fantasy footballers fan duel partnership that will be awesome for you guys. I know you guys will get excited. Don't get stuck in a lineup you regret. Oh, you got Melvin Gordon. Whoops. Whoopsie. You don't have to in FanDuel. You pick a new team every week. Injuries won't end your season. Plus, with the FanDuel app, you can bet anytime, anywhere, no matter how you like to play, there's a contest for you. Tournaments. Beat the score, single game, mini, labs, and more. It is a great game, and new users get a $5 bonus with their first deposit. Get in on the action anywhere you want. Sign up for FanDuel now and get a $5 bonus with your first deposit of at least $5. Go to FanDuel.com slash footballers or download, download the FanDuel app and see why FanDuel is way more than just fantasy sports. That's FanDuel.com slash footballers. All right, and with millions of live event tickets from sports to live music, to comedy. SeatGeek has the tickets that you are looking for all in one place. And let's be honest, guys. Right now, you're probably looking to go to a game. You want to take in some of that action live. I, I want nothing more in my life than to watch Michael Crabtree run routes <laughs> in front of my eyes for my home team. There's just nothing that would give me more joy. Don't you believe me? I have the SeatGeek app on my phone. I find it the easiest way to grab tickets anytime I want to. They rate every deal on a 1 to 10 scale, display them on an interactive seat map, green dots. They mean good deals. Red dots, they are overpriced. There are 50,000 five-star reviews for the SeatGeek app. It's just easier. It's I'm just one better. Of them. My sister's going to New York. She says, where did you get your Hamilton tickets? I said, SeatGeek. Gave her the link. Done. Got them. She's good to go. SeatGeek will even give you $10 off your first SeatGeek purchase. All you need to do is use our promo code. Download the SeatGeek app today. Use the promo code BALLERS for $10 off your first purchase. That is the promo code BALLERS for $10 off your first purchase. Well, that's the story of my life. No respect. Tell her no respect. All right. We're looking at some undrafted gems. So some players that are not currently being looked at at all in drafts. They're just left off the draft board. Uh, we had I had a Mega Bowl draft yesterday, and you get to the end of that draft, and you're sitting there, you do I want to put Adam Humphreys or Cole Beasley or Trey Quinn or you know these type of players on your roster? We each picked a couple of names. Um, I'll go first. The two names I want to bring up as potential undrafted gems – Marquise Goodwin, wide receiver for the San Francisco 49ers, and wide receiver Terry McLaurin of the Washington Redskins. And he was mentioned yesterday on the show. Mike, you brought it up. I love it. We'll start with Goodwin, though. Um, you know, I was a big Dante Pettis believer, and if you look at the unofficial depth chart yesterday, the starting wide receivers for the San Francisco 49ers are Dante Pettis, and Marquise Goodwin. Uh, Marquise Goodwin is the fastest player in the National Football League. When he's healthy, he is a weapon, and we've seen Jimmy Garoppolo use him. I I just think the gap between drafting Pettis in the sixth round and not drafting Marquise Goodwin makes very little sense to me with the kind of up-and-down news that we've seen from Dante Pettis. Um at least right now, Debo Samuel is not uh, atop this this depth chart. Jalen Hurd is hurt. Trent Taylor is hurt. So Marquise Goodwin, I think, could be one of those five, ten players that surprise people in week one. Yeah, he he could show up easily as a waiver one or waiver wire week one type of player. Yeah, and then Terry McLaurin, rookie wide receiver. There, there's not a lot in Washington as far as options, and if you're looking at what Washington has to play for, it's are we going to develop Dwayne Haskins? Are we going to develop our rookie wide receiver? Josh Doxson has been released. You've got Paul Richardson. You've got uh, Trey Quinn. And then you've got Terry McClur McLaurin, who's had great camp reports and has the rapport already built in with Dwayne Haskins. So keep keep an eye on him. When you define an undrafted gym, what do you, what's the message that you have for the listener? I'm looking for a player that I can stash at the end of my bench uh, that I'm trying to get ahead of the waiver wire run. Like I think that they have a chance to do something and then they're already on my team. I've already, I've saved that fab. I've saved that waiver priority on this player. And if, if they do nothing, 
They were undrafted for a reason. I mean, these guys, these, these are long shots. All, almost all the players at the end of the draft are long shots. So going for an undrafted gem, it, you're talking long shot, but massive upside, massive savings. Uh, the players that I want to throw out, you know I want to talk about them. Miami Dolphins wide receiver Albert Wilson. I like that. <laughs> this it it just keeps getting better for Albert Wilson and his opportunity. Yes, the Dolphins are going to trust the process. They have sold out. They will still have some production in Albert Wilson. He he's it. He's it in the passing attack. Kenny Stills was kind of the the other option, but they have sent him out of town. He's now on the Houston Texans. The, Dev the Devontae Parker experiment still continues, but Albert Wilson's actually a good player. He's fast. He's got 4-4 four, four speed. You saw it all last year that big plays can happen. Just get Albert Wilson the ball in space, and big plays can happen. In reception perception, he, is, he has a 98th percentile success versus zone, and he's going to see a lot of zone because he will be the slot wide receiver. He's also the slot wide receiver for a, for a new coaching staff, including Chad O'Shea, who was the wide receiver coach for the Patriots for 10 years, and we have seen the Patriots have massive success with the slot wide receiver, and, and Albert Wilson could fill right into that role. I don't think Albert Wilson goes undrafted if he doesn't have the injury last year. I, I, think, I completely agree. I think he's the most hyped, heralded, excited, bull, you know, I mean, fantasy uh, exciting player on this team if he doesn't have the injury. And then you got the changeover at the quarterback position in the coaching staff. So there's all these murky kind of variables, but they're starting to, you know, Kenny but Stills being traded away, Wilson looking good. Wilson's ready to go. Right. And, and so with, it's starting to look fine. With a team like the Dolphins, you want a player who can make something out of nothing. You know what I mean? It's not It's not that the Dolphins are some great offense where right. they're putting up so many points that you just want whoever the wide receiver one is. You want a guy who, on a certain game – you know, maybe they're down, maybe it's the beginning or late in the game, and it just takes one play where all of a sudden he's so fast and electric, you just take a screen to the house. I'm guessing the Dolphins are going to be seeing a lot of negative game scripts, which I turns concur. into passing. I concur. So does Vegas. So who's your second pick? Uh, it's not as exciting as Albert Wilson. I, I really want to stash Albert Wilson. But starting running backs are very hard to find, and – as of now, until further notice, Frank Gore is still the starting running back for the Buffalo Bills. I know we're very excited. The fantasy community is very excited to see what Devin Singletary can do. But I think the removal of LaShawn McCoy just entrenches Frank Gore as the starter, at least for the short term. This isn't you're going to hold on to Frank Gore and all season ride him out to the, the regular Frank Gore RB12 finish. But... At, at the worst, it's a timeshare, with which I believe Frank Gore will, will see the, the higher end of the timeshare. So I'm just interested to see week one. Does Frank Gore go out of the right out of the gate? And Frank Gore is getting 15-plus carries. If you want to hear the full breakdown on the Singletary situation, Frank Gore, we talked about it a lot on yesterday's show. I'm, I'm curious if I can dive into it for just two seconds. Here. Sure. I'll allow it. I'm curious what, what your thoughts are just – you know, people want to see what Singletary can do, but he's a really small guy. Yes. I mean, he's a 200-pound, 5'7 running back. Baffling. He did not, you know, score in, you know, none of the workout metrics did he impress in any way, shape, or form. I remember not liking the college tape very much. I thought he's looked fine in the preseason, but is there – I'm starting to wonder if – he if, just stinks – if he well, comes out and can't hang. Even if he doesn't stink, I, does the team view him as this guy that, like, wh why would they move on from Gore at any point during the season and just hand the whole backfield to Singletary? I don't think they will. I just am thinking it's going to be more committee-based. I think the team's going to be better than people think. I think they're going to ride that 500, ride those rails throughout the season, which doesn't make me think they're going to just try to turn to Singletary. I just am starting to... Just wonder what that looks like in the backfield and whether Gore will be there as a thorn in the Singletary owner's side oh, throughout yes. the season. And Singletary, like he is absolutely baffling. He's a smaller guy. He's not he's not off the charts athletically. In fact, he's quite under the charts. 
Uh, <laughs> you can, he's down beneath <laughs> the charts. He's looking up at the charts. Uh, but his college production profile is, is absolutely massive. He did it on a really bad team. And he won with power. Yeah, he's... Like, which is... It, he, but he's small, and so can he translate winning with power. Well, 15 bench reps. 12th percentile. <laughs> I'm saying. He is a very confusing player. The, the Bills do see something. I just believe that Frank Gore is going to be used more than drafting Singletary in the mid to late rounds and not drafting Frank Gore I at think, all. I think if you're in a deep league, like a 14-team a league with you know two flexes, something like that, Gore is very valuable because he's, he's just guaranteed use. Otherwise, though, I'm not excited about Gore because – I'm I, not excited. Sure, but, I mean, you, you brought up, like, undrafted gyms. You're looking to scoop someone up before the waiver claims go nuts on this guy after week one. Yeah, we all agree Frank Gore's best days are ahead of him, right? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> he is infinite. <laughs> he's all. He is all. He is Frank Sorry Gore. Sorry to cut you uh, off. No, you know, so, you know, I'm trying to find – but I agree. Like, you can't have enough – Running backs, like you just he he is currently a starting running back, and you need running backs. That's why one of my st undrafted gyms is Gio Bernard, just paid. They're not paying him to not use him, and he is in the situation where there is a world where he becomes better. Right, Joe Mixon goes down, and all of a sudden Gio. Oh, is Gio is a stud. If 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 Gio's a a he's not a handcuff because he has standalone value, but he has that handcuff built into him exactly so that that's why I'd rather stash a guy like Gio who could change into a star uh, you know if, if Devin Singletary goes down Frank Gore doesn't really get that much better it's like oh we're gonna give you five or six you know a couple more carries a game I went through the motions with Gio in the Megalobowl draft yesterday it's a two flex league last couple rounds he's sitting there and I'm just like I just don't know what I Joe Mixon to me can overcome a lot of the problems on the offensive line. And I just don't think Geo with eight to 12 touches a week will ever do anything for you. So I'm personally not in on that as a pick unless you're in a super, super deep league. It's a PPR flex type of move. It's I a mean, PPR flex and it's really the handcuff upside. I mean, it, you're not excited about Geo or you're, you're not going to be using Geo when Joe Mixon is, you know, out there getting all of the work unless you're in one of those deep PPR leagues. But if Joe Mixon goes down, then you've got a star before the, the waiver wire goes. The, the two players that, that I, I am more excited about, I want to throw out Miles Boykin. We haven't talked about him a lot. He's a rookie wide receiver for the Baltimore Ravens. He wasn't even the first rookie wide receiver drafted by the Baltimore Ravens because Hollywood Brown uh, went in the first round. Uh, to Baltimore, but he's been dealing with his injury from college. He's Liz, not a Liz Frank. Injury. Yeah, he's not up to a hundred percent right now. Uh, you know, he didn't get camp with Lamar Jackson. Miles Boykin, the 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 buzz around town in Baltimore is that he could very well establish himself as the number one, and he is the exact opposite of under the charts when it comes to workout metrics. I mean, he's sure. a ninety plus. He's percentile. up above him. He's like looking. <laughs> Looking down at those graphs, he's saying, look, look, look at this graph. <laughs> so, thank you, Mike. Yes. Um, I saw where you were going. He he is an athletic monster. He's 6'4", runs a 4'4", He's great across the board. He's not like a, a DK Metcalf where it's like, oh, he's great in a straight line, but, you know, if he tries to move side to side or quick little bursts, he, he's uncoordinated. This guy's a true different breed of athlete. Um, he's great against press coverage. Matt Harmon loved him in reception perception. And every reason I like Mark Andrews, the, you know, the, the fact that he's a big-bodied guy that could could emerge, that could also be true of Boykin. And then the last name I'll throw out, Anthony. Wait, 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 oh, okay. Wait, 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 wait. Boykin on it. Uh, Boykin, greater sign McLaurin for this year. I that, agree. That's where I'm at. I just wanted to put that out there because you brought up Boykin. I brought up McLaurin, both rookies, both with opportunity. But I, I like Boykin more. Yeah. Than I do McLaurin. And I think, you know, when you look at what Lamar Jackson had success with last year, I brought this up. Warren Sharp was talking about this. Like, he was not – Lamar Jackson struggled when he was put in a position like these forced passing downs, third down and long. He struggled throwing in those situations. He was very good when he threw early in the drive, first and second down throws. So I, I just think if there's a rapport there, Andrews – Boykin, those could be two of the main guys for this season. If Boykin comes out week one and gets 
eight, nine, ten targets, I think you're going to have a mad dash to the waiver wire. You know, I'm not usually in on early season rookie wide receivers, but this is a free one. This is yeah. an undrafted guy that costs you nothing. So, so what? Grab him. If he pops in week one, you've already got him. If he doesn't, then move on because he was undrafted anyways. Um, and Anthony Miller. Anthony Miller is a guy that – Is he I undrafted mean, now? Yeah, I mean well, – Because of the injury. The injury kept him out of preseason and out of a little bit of camp. He was a guy that when he was – I forget where he was, like the 10th round – I was loving his value there until the injury. Now the injury caused his value to be undrafted. He's on the waivers. He's the second wide receiver, a second year wide receiver as well for the Chicago Bears. Also not on the injury report, and in case you're curious. That's what I was going to bring up. He's not even on the injury report for this first week. You know who is? Trey Burton. Trey Burton is dealing with a lot of issues this whole camp. So part of the reason that you had hesitations with Anthony Miller was there's a lot of mouths to feed there. But maybe with Burton a little, you know, under the weather physically, you you have more opportunity for Anthony Miller. He was awesome as a rookie, even though he hurt his shoulder and had to have shoulder surgery after the season. Seven touchdowns as a rookie, he flashed a lot. So uh, he's a guy that I would also – Keep an eye on. I'd be fine with him or Miles Boykin uh, stashing those guys. Uh, Anthony Miller, greater sign. Miles Boykin, greater sign. <laughs> Terry, Terry McLaurin. <laughs> I took Anthony Miller in the in the ninth round of a twelve team Mega Bowl yesterday. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So I. He's a good wide receiver. Yeah, I mean, I, he, we liked him. He's been in the ultimate draft kit until the injury stuff happened, but. You know, that was just after Deshaun Jackson. That was ahead of Corey Davis, James Washington, Michael Gallup. Okay, you're saying other people's picks. Correct. Okay, I thought you were saying... My own pick? Yeah, and I was scared for you. No, it's kind Corey of... Davis It's pick. kind of funny because I took Anthony Miller in the ninth. I took Marquis Goodwin in the 12th round just for a deep shot. It's a two-flex league. You need to have somebody you can play, not just wait on. That's the hard part. You drop those guys... These are all players that hopefully you know something early, quickly. Move on if you're not interested. So um, that is it for undrafted gems. You guys want to talk about real? Yes! Oh my goodness! Thursday night breakdown. It's been too long, my sweet friend. <laughs> Wait, one friend? You just which friend are you referring to? I'm referring to football. Oh, okay. All right. The Your best friend. friend. The best my, friend. My of best all. friend. Sorry, guys. Uh the Green Bay Packers take on the Chicago Bears in week one. The Bears are three point home favorites. It's a forty six point over under. It's not bad. And this is a, what, th these two teams faced off week one last year, did they not? They certainly did. That's where Aaron Rodgers, <laughs> right before halftime, everyone thought Aaron Rodgers was done for the season. Little Willis Reed action. And then came back and was it three touchdowns to come back and win yep, the game? Yep, 24-23. Big comeback. Yes. And here we are, Aaron Rodgers, um, Mitch Trubisky. David Montgomery gets his first opportunity of the season. Aaron Jones. This is the week of conclusions. The wrong kind. You remember uh, Office Space? The yep. jump to conclusions? Matt, oh, yes. All the fantasy players, they break that mat out this this year. I, I'm worried about people breaking it out in week one. Wait, of, of course we are. Because for, the only, for Aaron Jones. The only, thing, the only thing better than taking a preseason victory lap is a week one oh. victory lap because that's it's for real. It's locked in the It feels done. so good. I win. I win. It's over. You guys remember Mike Gillisley? Was that a three oh, touchdowns yeah. week one? Oh, looked, yes, I do. great. Oh, Jordan Howard getting out to that pass-catching roll. Yeah, last year. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and then that didn't hold up. Um yeah, I, I'm just hoping that this game is a lot better than last year's kickoff. If you remember, what are you the, talking about? It was great. The Falcons Eagles. Oh, I was. I thought you were talking about the Bears Packer game. No, it's like that thing was that was incredible. No, I'm talking about the NFL kickoff that I was so excited for last year, and then it was just yes, a so, 12 gotcha. to 18. Aaron Jones may have a rough go to begin the season. Let's start with 
with Aaron Jones. I think we all like the upside. The Bears last year allowed the fewest rushing touchdowns. I looked it up this morning. It was one one touchdown per 67 rushing attempts. To put that in context, Aaron Jones averaged a touchdown every 16 attempts last year. The Bears are special against the run. Um, they had the second lowest early down run success rate. Running back struggle against the Bears defense we saw last year. They gave up the least amount of fantasy points to the running back position. You know, the third fewest to the quarterback position. They were just a great defense. We all know that. So if you believe in Aaron Jones, you, you really shouldn't not believe in him if he struggles in week one. Yes, that's very true. The, the, the big thing to watch for me is not, do I play Aaron Jones this week? You drafted Aaron Jones in the, the third round, maybe the fourth round. You're playing Aaron yep. Jones. You just, you're watching this to see if Jamal Williams is in the game. <laughs> More you're, than you thought or hoped he would be. Yeah, and, and this is a game where the Packers could get down, in, in which case you're watching to see if Aaron Jones is the pass catching right. back and utilized in that way to a greater degree because, you know, the last several years, Aaron Rodgers hasn't targeted the running back as much. I mean, he loves to look downfield, do, but, the, but the camp reports are the amount of uh, screens and set up for Aaron Jones in the passing game. So that's, that's one of the things you're going to be watching for. He's... He's going to be started. He's my running back 18 this week, so I don't have this as a great week for him, but still an RB2 range. If he is involved in the passing game, as we expect, he should be fine, even if the game turns a little bit uh, south. The second matchup for Aaron Rodgers in the Bears last year, Rodgers had 274 yards, 42 pass attempts, zero touchdowns in the Bears' victory in Week 15. I, you know, I think a lot of fantasy owners are curious about go beyond the guys that, you know, you, you spent a high draft pick on Devontae Adams, you play him. You spent yep. a high draft pick on Aaron Jones, you're going to play him. Yep. But some of these later round picks, seeing, you know, whether it's Geronimo Allison or Marcos Valdez Scantling, can you really roll either of those guys out there in week one with any sort of optimism? No. no not, I, with, not with confidence. I mean, perhaps you're in a three wide flex league and you have to play them because they were both Geronimo and MVS they kind of went around the same range you know that 8-9 area so you might be forced into playing them hopefully you don't have to this was uh, this was a hard part of of drafting I mean spending that early pick on Aaron Rodgers knowing that week one he's got to go up against the Chicago Bears and the same for Geronimo and, and Marquez it's I would prefer to sit and see how that shakes out uh, it will be interesting because Geronimo and, and Marquez are, you know, allegedly they're changing positions where last year in his short action, Geronimo was an outside receiver. Marquez in his rookie year, he was in the slot and they have swapped. Geronimo is now in the slot. I, I want to see that utilization. Yeah. And, I, you know, it's probably going to take more than a week to figure this out with those two players on the Bears side. David Montgomery, Tariq Cohen, the veteran Mike Davis. Oh, we we mentioned it yesterday, but cannot wait. Now I'm I'm really excited to see David Montgomery tomorrow yes. night. The Packers allowed the tenth most rushing yards in twenty eighteen. It's a great opportunity at home for David Montgomery to get off to a quick start. If he's running I know you guys joked yesterday, it's certainly a possibility because this happens all the time, that Mike Davis runs out there for the first snap. Because football, but what if it's not? What if it's David Montgomery snap one? I mean, they sat him down after uh, just like a little teeny bit of preseason work. They, you know, pretty much awarded him this this opportunity in the offense. You know, what if Montgomery runs out there and takes the majority of that drive one snap? So well, are people going to lose will. their minds? Yes, Th this game right here is a perfect example of okay. Let's say that you you went running back heavy early, and you've got Aaron Jones and David Montgomery on your roster, and you can play one of them. I would play David Montgomery over Aaron Jones. You're at home. You're favored. That's good for the 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 lead running back. I know he's a rookie, and we haven't seen it, and we don't know what the timeshare is, but the capital spent on him, the way they utilized him and then sat him in the preseason. The way they've talked about him, the way they have talked about we overused Tariq Cohen last year. Yeah, I mean, it's it's full full steam ahead for David Mop opportunity. David Montgomery, RB17 on the week. Tariq Cohen, RB29 on the week. 
That's where we have them as of right now. You can get all of the rankings at thefantasyfootballers.com. If you support the show at jointhefoot.com, you also get flex rankings. You get uh, more than two player start sit comparisons. You get premium projections. Yeah, you get the projections on the week. But very excited to see what Montgomery has in store for the Packers in week one at home. Um, Mitch Trubisky. I don't hate it. Right? I don't hate it. At home against an, another team that could score on the Packers or on the on Bears the, defense. Yeah, I, I don't hate it, but hopefully you have a better option because it's week one. We're not streaming yet. No, and you. so in that case, you probably aren't playing Mitch Trubisky. No, just now, saying if you got him, I don't hate it. I'm, I want to see the, the way this offense looks to start the year. Mitch Trubisky's second uh, season with Matt Nagy. Allen Robinson's second season in the system. Another year removed from the injury, and, and maybe he can be more consistent. Maybe he can be more regularly targeted and healthy on the field. Uh, he had a monster playoff game. He was 10 for 143 and 1 against Philadelphia. Saw seven or more targets in, in seven of his last eight games. You saw it that Allen Robinson, as the season progressed, he did become more involved. At, he was coming off the ACL, which it's very difficult for – us as fantasy players to remember all of the context of, of which these players started the year, but that's what he was. And for Mitch Trubisky, does he go back to running? Because he, he averaged almost five rushing attempts per game, which is, that's nice. That, those are some nice numbers for your quarterback. But he hurt, once he hurt his shoulder about two-thirds or so through the season, that's when he stopped running around. That's when his fantasy production went right back into the toilet. So that's if I'm watching anything from Mitch, that's what I'm looking for. 100%, because the the splits between the first half and the second half of the year were massively different with his rushing attempts. I believe that was because of the shoulder injury, which leads me to then conclude that because he's healthy right now, he's able to run, he's able to get out of the pocket. That's a big part of his tool set. I expect him to be a mobile rushing quarterback this season. So, obviously, Vegas has the Bears as three-point favorites. As we conclude this matchup breakdown, I would love to get a game one pick from you guys. As in who wins who, the game? Who, wins who the game? do you think wins the first game of the NFL season? Chicago. Now, Jason, I know you'll be tempted to take both teams. Sorry, Al. To guarantee that you'll be right in this situation. But I'm going to encourage you to pick one. The Green Bay Bears. <laughs> Uh, no, I am going to take. I'm gonna. I'm gonna take the Bears. Um, in a you take the Bears at home in a sadly low, lower scoring game. I'm gonna take them, twenty four, seventeen. Okay, Mike, uh, make your pick here. The Bears. You got the Bears yeah. as well. Well, I'll be the contrarian then. I think the You're Packers. The pack? I think the Packers squeak it out. I think they squeak it out in Week One. I think uh, you know, Mitch Trubisky is put into a position where he he's got a a final drive to come back and tie the game up, and shucks, he doesn't do it. No, well, hey, to be fair to, to Mitch, the last time we saw him trying to catch up, like he had to lead the team down. He did. He yep. did it in a great way. There was just somebody else who let the team down. Uh, was it a it was it a kicker, Mike? It was. Was it not so boom boom as bad bad maybe? <laughs> no, it was rough. Uh, but uh, all right, I'm excited. Uh, as a reminder. I said it earlier, fantasy forecasts, the first half of the games we'll review tomorrow, our starts of the week for week one. You guys should probably get those in, by the way. Oh, no, you <laughs> dirty dog. <laughs> you dirty dog. Yes. Mid-season form already. Mike is already in mid-season form. <laughs> he snuck into tomorrow's show, Doc. He put his starts of the week. I did it yesterday. Oh, my goodness. You're very, very sneaky. Then he breaks it out on the show. Don't forget to go to footclangiveaway.com. You can uh, win a signed Alvin Kamara jersey. That is courtesy of Pristine Auction, the show sponsor, uh, the studio sponsor, a signed Saquon jersey, $88 yesterday on the show. And uh, that is it for today's episode of the Fantasy Footballers. Thank you for subscribing, tuning in, listening. Jason, I think the Green Bay Bears have a great shot tomorrow yeah. night. So uh, we'll catch you tomorrow. Yes, we will, Foot Clan. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. This episode was brought to you by Head & Shoulders and Walmart.
No matter where you fall on the offense versus defense debate, Head & Shoulders will give you a 100% flake-free scout because it's offense. It's defense, Mike. <laughs> Ew, sure. Did you know that Troy Palomalo's hair was insured for a million buckaroonies what? by Head & Shoulders in 2010? Check out Head & Shoulders at Walmart.com or look and find it at your local Walmart store.